My name's Karen. I'm the Senior Instructional Technology Specialist here on campus. Largely what that means is that I get to work with instructors such as these as they are exploring technology and different things that they can do with their classes. Um, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about the um, Canvas pilot and about the transition to Canvas is seeing the wide variety of ways that instructors have found to use these tools. The tools themselves are pretty flexible and they give instructors a lot of ability to pick and choose how they want to make things work. So I'm really excited about today's panel. There are some great instructors here who have done some really interesting things with the tools um, and they've, they've learned the system in some interesting ways. So I'm largely going to hand it over to them and like them all to start with kind of an introduction of themselves, talk a little bit about your experiences with Canvas, and then we can jump right into our topics. Um, at any time, if you guys have questions or if you'd like more information, please do feel free to raise your hand or look confused and probably somebody on the panel will see you and say, hey, question. Um, but with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Chris. So I'm definitely not an expert on Canvas at all the way that some of my other panelists are and the way that Kelsey and Karen are, but I've been using it. I came here after being away for, for two years in, I guess, fall of 2015, and I was told when I came that the campus was starting this transition from Triple E to Canvas, and it seemed like, okay, well, I might as well not learn the first one and then later have to move to the second one, so I started out for that reason, not not for any other particular reason. And I've used it in pretty basic ways, like I think a more basic way than the other <laughs> panelists here. And so my, my favorite way of using Canvas has been like find out what features does it have and figure out how to adapt those to me. So some of those are listed up here under the highlights. So LaTeX, I don't know if any of us are mathematicians, but the way mathematicians write like word process is using this typesetting program called LaTeX. And that, that's just built right into Canvas. So that, that's a nice feature. And I think the one that I'm most happy with is the anonymous grading, where I'm not like looking at somebody's handwriting or not looking at their names or using my like previous knowledge of how much I think the student knows. I'm just looking at what did they type into the computer and like I don't see their name or anything like that or how how well they write. So yeah, I main thing I want to say is I'm not an expert, but Happy to try to answer questions. Hi, I'm Liz, and I've been lecturing here in the School of Education for the past few years, uh, before it became a school of education. And I started using Canvas electively. I heard about it through a summer training that Karen led when it was just kind of a thought. And I decided to explore it. And it was technically elective for the students. Right, because it's this, there's this kind of caveat of this being a third party tool. And so it was very exciting for me when it became a bit more official. And I noticed Canvas has evolved quite a bit since I first started using it. And in some ways that weren't really clear to me uh, that I stumbled upon later that, oh wow, now that feature is available. So that's pretty cool that it is kind of constantly updating itself. And uh, some of my classes rely heavily on group work and Canvas has helped me a lot in organizing my groups and helping them turn their uh, work in too. I also love, we'll talk later about some of the peer review features have been really neat and uh, the custom home pages which have taken a while for me to discover like what the possibilities are. It's not always evident, but there's a lot of flexibility for, for customizing on Canvas that I've really liked. Hi, I'm Andrew Penner. Uh, I'm an associate professor in sociology. Um, so I think I was among the early adopters, um, uh, kind of by accident, um, uh, but a happy accident, I think. Um, uh, so I um, wanted to do uh, an online class because I thought, you know, probably before I retire, I'm going to be doing an online class in one way, shape, or form. And if I maybe start doing this now, I have some say in what online education looks like. Um, uh, my friends say that I'm the most optimistic person that they know, which is, you know, that's probably evidence of that. Um, uh, but so the, the goal I really had was to, to try to bring a, a seminar feel into a sort of a larger classroom, right? And um, uh, so we use uh, video and video conferencing quite heavily, um, uh, in part to sort of get around issues of plagiarism, right? If you have a person's face, you know, on video in front of you, you know that they were the ones saying those words. Um, uh, and then, um, you know, the course is sort of organized topically. So basically, in a, in a typical week, you know, students will do the readings. They'll discuss over video conference with their students uh, 
uh, with the TA and about 10 other students. Um, and then every week, some students are going to make a little video mini lecture, which other students are going to watch and then respond to. Um, and then we'll have the sort of the culmination of the every week is sort of a, a panel where I have student panelists and myself that are all sort of in video conference. And then other students are in sort of a, a native chat interface, right? And so they're sort of, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, like, like a Twitter or something like that, right? Where it's sort of everyone's tweeting at each other while they're watching this sort of these talking heads. And um, <laughs> it's been uh, a learning experience for me. I feel like a dinosaur pretty regularly. Um, but, uh, but it's been a lot of fun and um, has, has worked well, I think. The students seem to enjoy it. So. And I, I like it too. Good morning. Um, I'm Sharon Salinger from the history department. Um, I have no idea why I decided to use Canvas. Um, I returned to teaching a couple of years ago, actually a fall of 2015, which was my first opportunity to use Canvas. Uh, I've come to know Karen extremely well as a result, and it's been one of the great pluses of using Canvas. I can assure you I am not an expert. I'm still learning. Um, I teach a very large, by my standards, 240 student history course, and I think I use Canvas quite traditionally. We have um, 10 discussion sections, five TAs, and me. And so, um, we st and we also still do a lot of the stuff that's very low tech um, pieces of paper and pens. So it's, a, it's an interesting combination, I think, of um, trying to be high tech with Canvas and learning what it is and what it isn't, and um, integrating into that, wanting to see if the students can actually put words down on a piece of paper uh, in, in complete sentences. So um, I'm also happy to answer questions about how it is to learn it um, beyond having Karen on speed dial. 